Hey everybody, how y'all doing? You know, this is a weird feeling that oil pan's on. You can see the nuts and bolts. It's on. But the timing cover's not on. Well, I'm trying out a new setup. Because this may end up being my mule motor for things. And, uh, yeah. Uh, have you ever seen a timing cover that's completely flat with no lip for a seal? Well, that's what this is set up for. Uh, so, yeah. Um, that'll make it easier changing camshafts in this. And then, let's see. Uh, what else has been going on? Uh, we're going to set up to do some break-ins on stuff. And so, finally... Many guys suggested it, and I can see the point of it. Got some 1 3 breaker and rocker arms. Then, let's see. The 20 over motor right there. The pistons and rods I went to clean up for that one. Um, got spun rod bearings, and I could see where a couple of the pistons had smucked the head of the head of the motor. The head of the piston against the head on the motor so I'm not comfortable using those so I got on the old flea bay and found a set of 20 over flat tops perfect shoulder goal and in the video that I'll make on these these were from July 28th of 1993 they even say 93 right up in there so they were new overstock I found on so that'll be a nice little flat top I mean these are heavy pistons but uh, what it's being built for it'll work so yeah that's kind of weird having this motor at this point and uh, I had deliberately done that the bottom end of this motor's done well I gotta get the frost plugs in so, core plugs or because those are actually core plugs they're not frost plugs they are not designed to push out when the motor freezes because they needed the holes to get the sand out of there so they could uh so that's what they did. <laughs> That'll probably start an argument, but that's really what they are, core plugs. But everybody calls them, calls them soft plugs or frost plugs now. So amazing how change everything. And well, kind of goes along with everything else in this world, right? We just change it to fit our needs. Anyway, uh, yeah, so this is going to get wrapped up. And like I said, this is going to be a test mule if this camshaft that was selected wasn't the correct one. Now it's going to be pull the water pump, that front time, the harmonic balancer, timing cover. And we won't have to worry about the oil pan gasket because that was always the problem getting that back in without taking the oil pan down. So, but anyway, uh, so uh, let's see. And then they are out of the pre mades. So. This is what we're stuck doing now. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, just a second. Don't want the count the oil or whatever. Well, they are out of the pre-mades that got the breather tubes. So that's where this come in they had to make your own kit so we're gonna use a hole saw drill a hole here weld them in so I can have my uh, tall valve covers with breathers for the dirt track motor so and then uh, the rock arms I really wanted they didn't have there are a lot of stuff so we got long slot 1.5 stamp steel, which is the roll. The roll is either these or roller tips, and the roller tips I wanted are not available. So, uh, yeah. And let's see. Yep, then I got. And then here's that big gasket that goes there to seal up on that plate which is going to be nice so 
Yep, we got a little bit. Oh, that's what I was going to do. I'm going to show you guys. And I'm doing pretty good keeping the shop clean. There's broken tools. Oh, yeah, I busted those. Uh, if you guys are interested in that timing cover, there you go. Not bad. 30 bucks. So it doesn't break the bank. I mean, it comes with all the gaskets. And I got thinking, no, if I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to have to find a, see if they sell those separate so I can get a few of those on hand to have a, in case of change uh, camshaft. So, yep. Supposed to be rock arms and nuts and balls in there. I haven't taken them all out to see yet, but. Yeah, we got too many dollars of camshafts going into stuff, and Cat, you about got set on. Yeah, you about got set on, if I wanted to look. So, getting this one wrapped up. Got some other stuff going on. Uh, 327's off at the machine shop already. I uh, had that in the back of the truck. The other day, it was decent out. Uh, why take it out of the truck to bring it in here to turn around to drag it back to the truck to try and figure out how to get it in? And being it was in the truck, it was easy to tear apart right then and there. So I tore it in the back of the... Tore it, uh, da, 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 da. I tore it down in the back of the truck and took care of it that way. Didn't have to worry about it. And the day I did it, I beat the rain. They said it was going to be raining by one. I was on my way to the machine shop before it started raining, so it didn't get hurt. Uh, I think it's going to be a pretty good build as we do that one. There's some interesting things that have happened to that motor. I'll point out in the video. Uh, just tells you things at the factory don't always get done like they're supposed to. Even back then. So, oh, then uh, one of you guys that's talking to you last night. So it's something you gotta have, he goes, you, you gotta have a set of rods. Oh, I got plenty of rods around here. But the, the cost that they want for reconditioning them is making it cheaper to buy new ones. Well, I sit here after he said that comment and I got thinking. For some of you OG guys that have been here, uh, way back in the, when, when I started doing this, I had that green 97 Chevy that I pulled the motor out of. That had over 332,000 miles on it. And uh, guess what? They checked the rods from that motor. Because these are all torqued up in that. And they said they were okay. They're not out of round. They're good. Well, I want to use the rods from that 97 Vortec. In that 20 over. So, now I just got to get the rods on. So, yeah. I got thinking about that. And then. Uh, it was easier to find it because I had moved because actually those rods were right there on the bottom shelf of that toolbox. Actually, here they are. So, yeah. The block that these went to are long gone. Uh, actually, I never got it back from the machine shop because there was a little misunderstanding. They uh, bored it and was ready for pistons. And I told them just to clean and crack check it and measure it to see what it was going to take for a bore uh, so yeah the we and, and then it ended out the, up the block they gave me that was one of their cores was a 30 over block that was, uh, was a little tight so we honed it put it together and it's running so I actually I kinda got a machine block for little nothing that time so but yeah, um, okay, well, we're this part of the video, so uh, Mama Bear had her scoping done yesterday, Wednesday, and uh, got a little scared, because this was supposed to take, from start to finish, about an hour, hour, 15 minutes. As he says, it's gonna, they're going to knock her out, and their scope done, back in recovery. Well, three hours went by. Uh, before I realized it and then I'm like uh, calling in because couldn't go in you know and finally got a hold of the nurse oh yeah she's in recovery everything went okay and the nurse said some stuff 
but found out later. Uh, okay, the good news is for Mama Bear is her esophagus, esophagus is good. No acid reflux. Her stomach is nice and, and healthy and pink. No ulcers, no holes. But the start of her small intestine is inflamed, irritated. Uh, they're not 100% sure it is the gallbladder. So they took a bunch of samples and they said, well, at first they said, oh, two to three weeks. I said, she doesn't have two to three weeks to wait. She goes another two to three weeks without eating because she, as of the scoping yesterday, the last thing she ate was a banana on Monday. I said, she can't go that long without eating. So Doc must put a rush on it and they're hoping to hear by Friday or by Tuesday the results of what they find. Uh, she's doing okay. She's a little discouraged. She's got... <laughs> if you guys knew Mom Bear, she just does not like going to the doctors. So, with that, um, she's doing okay. She's hanging in there. Uh, she did eat a little something last night, finally. Not much, but something at least. And uh, she's doing okay. So uh, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens and keep going. So, but anyway, uh, I guess I'm going to keep making videos here. Because I'll probably uh, do the value. Do a video on the valve covers and the rest of this timing chain cover and that so I'm just kind of getting some info out there for you guys and trying to wrap stuff up uh, yep there's some other stuff going on that it, there it, it's going there's gonna be a different line of motors coming through here I think so just have to keep going and yes uh, hopefully this weekend or next weekend this can uh, go bye bye uh, and that's what I'm shooting for next weekend. I got one guy. He thinks hopefully between him and I we can get the rough done on the shop. So I uh, might make the kids uh, or highly request the kids to come out and help with cleanup or uh, even peeling off the old roof. So and I hope I don't have too many sheets of OSB to replace because I've only got 10 sheets on hand. Which 10 sheets is almost one side of the roof, so... Uh, if I don't have to use all those, I want to repair the north wall of the shop. And get that weather tight and sealed and that, since obviously no addition is going to go on to the shop anytime soon, so... Get the north side of the shop all weather tight and sealed. And, uh... Keep on going, so... Uh, yeah, I gotta stop and do that yet. So, anyway, everybody, uh, I guess stay tuned. Like I said, I got some small videos coming up, and I've been uh, posting some stuff on TikTok. So, uh, I guess we'll see y'all later. Have a good one.